with our session, uh, Entrepreneurship Investing um, in Female-Led Businesses and the Story of Golden Seeds. Some of you will be familiar with this. Um, it's a real pleasure to introduce Managing Partner Loretta McCarthy um, and Business Angel and Entrepreneur um, David Beatty. I first met Loretta and David in, at the ACA, Angel Capital Association, um, 2013 conference in San Francisco. I more recently met with David at the ACA conference in Washington this year. Um, the progress that um, Golden Seeds have made in the United States has been just phenomenal. Um, with a surname like McCarthy, I'm sure Loretta has some um, Irish connections. And David um, is a citizen of our own native city, but he's domiciled now for perhaps the best part of um, two decades in the Big Apple and is regularly back, back to our shores. Um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to Loretta and she'll share the story and maybe take some Q&A between herself and David as well. Thanks, okay, Loretta. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, can everyone hear? Looks like it's okay. Thank you. Um, I was t very taken this m in this morning session when Kieran Connell, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, mentioned that when he started his business, uh, quote, we were heavy on vision. And I thought, oh my, that sounds just like Golden Seas in 2005. We were heavy on vision. And like he said, he wasn't really sure how this was all going to come together, and nor were we at the time. But we are really thrilled to be here to share the story of Golden Seas over the last nine or so years. Um, in fact, just a few minutes ago, I, Kathleen Healy, a member of Golden Seeds who's in the audience, showed me the current cover of the issue of, of Newsweek that has, uh, the, the, where the cover article is Disruptive Females, and it is a story of about 13 uh, leading women entrepreneurs, uh, largely in the U.S. So we're really thrilled to tell you the story about Golden Seeds. Um, We were started in 2005, and we had a very specific goal of increasing the number of women-led companies in the United States. The facts at that time were that women were starting somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of the companies in the United States, and they were getting less than 5 percent of the capital going into new companies. So needless to say, that bothered some of us, and we set about to, to write that course. Um, we, it was also interesting to us that in 2005, when Golden Seeds was started, uh, women as a percent of total angel investors were about 8 percent. So that we think that was about 16,000 women uh, out of the total number of angel investors were, were women, uh, were, were angel investors, um, which was pretty low. Um, it was actually higher than I thought it was at the time, but that, those are the numbers. Uh, so our goals were to address both of these issues, but the third and really important goal is to address the, the, the issue of gender um, diversity. It is now known and really proven by many studies such as McKinsey, uh, Credit Suisse, and many other organizations that gender diversity in, on boards of directors, in senior management, in, and many other types of organizations, including governments, uh, produce better results overall, and in financial organizations they produce better better gender results. Of particular interest to this audience is the fact that it is also now proven through research that in venture-backed companies, which are the ones obviously that we're interested in, the odds of success, which success being defined as either going public, operating uh, profitably, or being sold for more money than was brought into the company, the odds of success uh, increase substantially if there are women on the board of directors, or founders, or in, in senior management in those companies. So for all kinds of reasons, we believe that a gender diverse world and a gender diverse um, environment is, is optimal, and we are seeking that at Golden Seeds. So a bit of the story of where we've come from over the last uh, nine years. Uh, we are now a nationwide organization in the states. Um, you, the big dots here are places where we have active, organized chapters of Golden Seed. So that is New York, where we have 160 members. We have a group, in, a very active group in Boston, Silicon Valley, and Texas, and also members uh, scattered all over the country who are very active in our work. Um, as, of to, as of this month, we have over 300 members nationwide. 
All of these members are, um, are expected to invest a certain amount every year. They also are expected to work on deals, work on due diligence. It might interest you to know that 20% of our members are men because we believe in gender diversity. So we, um, we welcome the men who are active members of Golden Seeds, and you'll hear from one shortly. Um, the, the 300 members that we have are certainly active as investors and doing due diligence with us. They're also ambassadors for us everywhere we go. Um, they help us source deals, they help us uh, work on deals, and they uh, importantly help us with companies post-investment. So we, we, we know who our members are, we know what their backgrounds are, and draw upon all of their experience to help these companies succeed. Um, in total, we've invested in 61 companies. We got there by looking at about 2,400 companies so far. So this year, we will see about 400 companies. The numbers have increased every year. Um, so we've invested in less than 3% of the companies that have applied to us, which is, I think, quite normal in, in the US. And in total, we've invested $63 million. Um, and we don't have time to talk about our venture business, but we do have some venture funds. David Rose mentioned earlier a sidecar fund that New York Angels has. We have also had a sidecar fund. About one third of that 63 million was invested through our funds, and the rest were individual members writing checks. Um, just one last thing, because it's probably on your mind on this slide, is how are we doing with these companies? And so I, we will just, I can say that we've had three positive exits. Uh, we've had nine wind downs out of these out of these companies, out of these 61 companies. We have 49 currently operating companies, and of those 49, 30 of them are new within the last three years. So it's still quite a young group of companies, but those have been the results that we've had so far. And then today, uh, just a couple of other uh, points is that. We believe that somewhere in the range of 15, maybe as high as 20% of the funded companies in the U.S. today are women. Women are, are applying with truly astonishingly um, promising business ideas really across the board. It's very hard to, for us to select from the many promising companies that come to us. It's quite thrilling to see the progress that women have made. Uh, and uh, the, the numbers of angel investors that are women are now in the about 21%. Um, and, the, and the numbers of angel investors have grown substantially as well. So we believe that the number of women who have ac are actively participating in angel investing has about tripled in the years since we started this. You know, we, when those of us who started were there at the very beginning with Golden Seeds, think when we think about the journey that we've been on, we realize that, that this generation of of entrepreneurs that we are funding and that we are mentoring because we get very involved with a lot of companies that don't quite make it to the finish line with us. But we believe that in it, one way we look at this is that this is the first generation of uh, seriously funded when, women entrepreneurs. And we also believe that those of us who have been writing checks, many, most of whom are women, are in many ways the first generation of women who have the skills, the capacity, the wealth and the interest to do this and the, and the investment experience to do this kind of investing. So we are at a very interesting intersection with those, with those populations. Um, one of our most active and effective members is David Beatty, who happens to be from Dublin, so we couldn't resist having him on this program. Uh, and he is going to spend a couple of minutes talking to you about uh, his experience at Golden Seeds. Thank you. Thanks very much, Loretta. Good afternoon. My name is David Beatty. I'm an entrepreneur and an angel investor. And I actually grew up here in Dublin, and I've spent the last 24 years living uh, in the United States, mostly in the New York metropolitan area. I started my first company in the US in 1993. That company still runs today. It's what we call a cash cow, and love them. Um, and I did my very first angel investment in the year 2000. But it took me until 2007, when I was invited to join Golden Seeds, to realize the benefit of being part of an angel group. And I remember that very first meeting really well, because A, the caliber of the people around the table, it's like being here today. Everybody who ran that table, they didn't need to be there. They wanted to be there, they wanted to be part of investing in early stage companies, and they wanted to help early stage entrepreneurs. 
And the other thing I remember about that meeting was the mood of collaboration around the table and how engaged everybody was, not just in actually talking about are we going to make an investment in a company, but also how can we support the portfolio that we have. And it wasn't just one or two people around the table. It was half the table spoke up about companies that we'd invested in. And I believe that that's one of the key successes that Golden Seeds has, is because as a member, I'm required to make an investment every year. I'm required to sit on a due diligence team every year. But it also means as a member that I know when I'm sitting around the table and somebody speaks, that I'm actually dealing with somebody who writes checks. Because we all know that angel groups as a group of wealthy individuals are very attractive for a lot of people who just want to be part of a group. And I think it's really important, and as I say, one of the keys to the success of Golden Seeds, that we are a group of people who write checks. One of the other keys, I think, to Golden Seed's success is our emphasis on education. One of our business units is, a, is what we call the Knowledge Institute. We have a curriculum that we've developed of four workshops that we lead uh, on best practices for angel investing. We believe angels are, uh, uh, investors are better when they're educated about the fundamentals of angel investing. Um, I also head up the international Refairs that we do at Golden Seeds. And you'll see here from this map, this is, area, this is uh, countries in the world where Golden Seeds members have been in the last three years. We've spent over 200 man days around the world leading workshops on angel investing, often in collaboration with the US State Department and most often in developing countries. We also participate and we go overseas and broaden our minds and see what's going on overseas, participating in delegations. And we also host delegations um, of angels in New York and share what it's like to be part of the New York ecosystem. So with that, I'm going to uh, invite Loretta to take the podium over there and ask if anybody has any questions of us, please. I need to say that I love what you, what you do, and, and uh, it took me 15 angel investments uh, before I ended uh, up investing in a female entrepreneur, which I did uh, two months ago. Now, what you're trying to do, Loretta, is solving what I think is a, a huge global problem, and not only a US-specific uh, um, problem. So can you be a little bit more specific on how you want to expand internationally? You know, I, I'm invited at one thing on Wednesday at 8 o'clock, with like-minded you and other thing in Beijing. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna solve this global yeah. uh, problem and what is your international plan? So I can only speak for our plans right now and for Golden Seeds and that is that we do not have plans to start chapters or groups of Golden Seeds internationally. Um, we have, we, we, we have so many applications of companies coming into us in the U.S. and many parts of the U.S. that are interested in starting groups of golden seeds that we haven't decided to do anything officially outside of the U.S. We do have many inquiries of organizations that are interested in doing something akin to what we have done with a focus on, on women. Uh, and so we, we work with organizations at time to share what we believe our best practices or how we've done it. And because we obviously we are also on a mission here and we want to see women entrepreneurs do as well as possible. So if we can be useful to groups, we, will, we can make ourselves available. And um, we feel that we've done, learned a lot in these 10 years and we will often share much of that. But we don't have plans to expand interna internationally. Is that David? Golden Seeds, has done an, Golden Seeds has done an amazing job at investing in women entrepreneurs, um, yet the numbers of women entrepreneurs who get funded is relatively low. The number of women entrepreneurs is relatively low. Um, many people who are not as familiar with the world as I think we all here attribute this to discrimination. Male investors do not invest in women or so on and so forth. Obviously, that's not true of you guys. It's obviously not true of, you know, like New York Angels and other groups that, that are, are really, we, I believe, gender blind. So what is it that you think are the root causes of why there are fewer women entrepreneurs pitching us? I mean, not you, because you proactively aim for them. But for a group like us in the same yeah. locations you are, we do not get pitched by as many women as we would like to see. Why is that? 
Um, I'll, I'll give it a quick answer, and David might have something to add. I actually think that that's such a perfect question, David, and I, I do think that, in a sense, it's where we were 10 years ago. Uh, and our sense was that there were, we knew that there were a lot of women starting businesses. We also know that the, num the amount of experience every year, the amount of experience that women are gaining and the amount of even academic credentials that they are gaining enable them to think in terms of businesses that they will start. And that had started in 2005 when we began. So what we tried to do at Golden Seas is create an environment in which these companies would be seriously considered, where they would know how to apply, they would be seriously considered, they would get advice about uh, the conditions in which they could move forward with this, or possibly advice about the conditions in which they could come back when they've made more progress. Uh, along the way, I think they also thought uh, in much larger terms, possibly, than they had before. So you know, now, 10 years in, I, I, we have no hesitation to say that women think in very large terms. They are very capable of putting together uh, highly sophisticated business plans, and they come to us with quite remarkable credentials and aptitudes to do this work. Um, so I, I, I think that if you haven't seen uh, a lot of women entrepreneurs, um, you, you know, first of all, I would say that you too could think about how to create an environment in which any entrepreneurs who come to you uh, feel that they will be welcomed and, and have the opportunity to tell their story. Um, sometimes it also helps to have a diverse uh, membership because many women will say to us uh, that it is tougher to, to pitch to organizations when they walk in the room and it's all men. So you know, on, for that reason, there may be reasons to uh, attract more women to your organizations. And, and, and oh, by the way, women have money to invest. So if that allows more, more capital to get to your companies, that's helpful. What can you add to that, David? It's kind of tough to add to that, but um, you covered it very well. I think one of the key issues is actually gender diversity. And if you fundamentally accept the principle that a gender diverse management team is going to perform better fiscally, I think it's just very sensible investing practice to go out of your way and go out of our way to actually make sure that the companies that we invest in are gender diverse. And when I speak to women entrepreneurs and I speak to women, what I hear very often is that it's, they actually don't know people in these networks. And women, my understanding is, start 50% of companies, and yet they only get funded by about 15% of them. So there's a disconnect there. And, and maybe it's, it's, we need to go out and do more promotion about that women need to go out and get funding. And it's not just something that, that uh, is available because something like 90 something percent, and I don't know the exact number, of everybody in venture capital and private equity are white men. And it's not that they're necessarily wanting to discriminate, but being a human being, their networks are people like themselves. And it's much easier for them to network in the golf club or wherever in the people that they know in the people who are like them. And I think it actually requires that people are a bit more proactive in going out and ensuring that there is diversity, not just gender diversity in the management teams of the companies that we fund. Um, thank you. Um, actually, three of my startups are uh, led by uh, female, and uh, they're among the best performing startups that, that we have. Um, since you are investing in women-led businesses, and you mentioned that you are not planning to expand outside the, the US, um, why don't you open the network for um, investors, angel investors from outside the US? And let me give you a small piece of information, there are so many women in the MENA region um, who are smart, talented, and um, actually by involving them somehow in your network, you will help them because the system in the, in the Middle East is not really mature yet, and you have been in Egypt and Jordan, and, and I think you know that. Plus, more important, there are more rich women in the Gulf who have lots of money, and they're looking for ways to invest, and I think a network like this would be an ideal platform for them to invest in women from the Middle East via a, a platform like this. So if you're thinking of opening a chapter, maybe you could just consider opening the platform for angel investors and women from outside the US. We would
would love to speak to you later, so thank you so much. You know, and I will say that the one thing, we do get inquiries from time to time from non-U.S. citizens wanting to know if they can become members. Uh, and, you know, the, as, I, as I understand it, the only requirement is that they be accredited investors, and I feel pretty certain that those women in the Gulf are accredited investors. So thank you for that suggestion. Great. Thank you all very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, Yeah. Thanks kindly, Loretta, and thanks kindly to uh, David and to David in, in, in particular for um, organising the um, for Loretta and himself to visit us here. It's been a pleasure to have you with us, and I'm sure there'll be lots of people that will want to speak to you later.